guys, uh, today I'm going to do a little video on how to tweak an injector pump, a Bosch VE injector pump and they're fitted on the early discos and defenders both a 200 TDI and a 300 TDI so I'm not going to get dead involved, uh, just going to do a simple little procedure that I do on uh, all injector pumps I've tweaked over the years so I'm going to keep it nice and simple, not too technical so yeah, that's the uh, Bosch VE injector pump and basically I'm just going to be modifying the fuel screw um, as a security seal on it shouldn't really mess with that but all I'm going to do is just take the security tab off it and I'm just going to wind it in only half a turn so that's just 180 degrees that's all I'm going to do with that don't do any more than that because it's, it's dangerous, you can get diesel run on, you can blow your engine up quite easy if you mess about with that too much. And then I'm just going to take the diaphragm housing off and show you a few little tweaks on what to do in, in that. So this one's already got the EGR switch took off. I mean if you look on this one you'll probably find that on most of them. You can do away with that and blank off the EGR and take the ECU out which controls the EGR valve because they're useless anyway so yeah we'll uh, dive into it like I say you could you can do this on your vehicle I'm just doing it off the vehicle just to simplify it so you can see a little bit more closer up so we'll uh, get into it so the first thing we're going to take this little core plug seal off so all I've done is I've just got a pointed implement you can grind a screwdriver down whatever poked a couple of little holes in there knocked them in with hammer so then you can just sort of prise it off a little bit at a time there on each side and eventually it'll give way and come off so it's easier taking this off before we start stripping it down so that'll come off eventually there we go so pop that off keep that to one side so that's all we're doing with that for the time being and then we're just going to crack off the diaphragm bolts and screws just to uh, take the diaphragm housing off these two are different because like I say it used to have the EGR controller switch on it two flat heads on here usually dead tight these just get them two off as well so as you've got the housing resting on top you see the gap there now that looks like about 10 mil or so what we're going to do we're going to adjust the star wheel inside to make that gap smaller so basically i'm going to take the top off there pop that down basically that's to make it easier for the turbo boost to control the fuel pin at lower revs so therefore you're generating more fuel lower down the rev range i'll show you how to do that in a minute anyway so usually when the standard the idea is we're going to be rotating the diaphragm around if you see the little dot there around 90 degrees to 100 degrees on average now if it's been messed with you're not going to really know so basically going from a standard setup like I say, rotate it clockwise, 90 to 100 degrees. But basically, if you pop that out, sometimes it can be a bit hard to get out, but this has been stripped down. You can see a little mark, I don't know whether, let's get it underneath here. A little mark where it's been in the first place. So that's where the fuel pin has been pushing in and out. And you can see the angle of it it's not at its steepest and the idea is if you rotate it this way that's where it'd be at its steepest and the idea is to get the most movement along the angle to control that pin so like that's 90 degrees difference and there's a lot more travel 
so that basically what it does is as that's in there yeah you've got a pin which comes out and because that's at an angle it's pushing the pin in and out and you want the most travel on that pin so you can work it out yourself if it has been messed with you just want the steepest angle so if we, if we turned that that would be the steepest angle there so we'd pop that back in you know like that so and if you look look at it you know it's getting on for 90 degrees there so that's the idea behind that and then we take the spring off we've got a little collar here now that looks like it's been shaved down that basically that collar is usually around another mil thicker than that now what you can do you can get some abrasive or get it on a grinder if you're careful and you want to make that thinner so I usually take about two mil of a standard one so I'm basically I'm making that two millimeters thinner so you can sand that down just uh, I'll get something to show you so you get your little collar you can mark that up with a marker like I say this one it's already had a little bit took off anyway but if you mark it up all the way around with a marker what you want to take off it and then just got a bit of a block here with some sandpaper on it just keep running it up and down and like I say if it was standard I'd take a good couple of mil off it well, this has had a bit took off it anyway, so I'm just going to take another millimetre off it. Keep turning it as you're doing it so it keeps it flush and level all the way around. Helps sand your skin off your fingers as well. <laughs> so you can see I've took about a mil off that. So that helps to gain more travel with your diaphragm and the pin so we'll save that and then we come to the star wheel now basically the star wheel what it controls is how high your spring is going to live so basically what we want to do we want to reduce that so we want to make it so when we've got the housing resting on it we've got less gap in between the top of the housing on the weight of the spring and the pump so to do that all we actually want to do is rotate this star wheel clockwise if it was standard I recommend doing it anything from like a half full half turn 180 degrees to nearly a full turn so basically there's 90 degrees there's 180 degrees and then usually another quarter of the turn another 90 degrees is about right so basically when you're going to put that back on with the spring then you've got your little collar now your little collar basically it's easier popping it on here before you put it on just hold it with your thumb so basically you've got that rotated 90 degrees so you've got the steepest angle on the bottom of the pin so your fuel pin when it comes in it's got the most travel you've done your star wheel you've got your little shaved down collar on it so that's all set up so you pop that in so that's all good and then when you push it down you've just got it resting on the weight of the spring so you're resting your housing on here and basically you want the gap which is between the housing as it's resting on level and the actual injector pump to be about five to seven mil yeah the idea is that the least gap the more fuel you get early on in the boost so it controls mostly your mid-range fueling so once you've got that set up right you can you can bolt it back together so you get your bolts back in Doing everything one-handed because of the camera <laughs> so 
So that's the diaphragm part of it done. Then you want to crank this off. Now what this is, is going to do is basically it's got a lock nut and a Torx bolt going through it and all it does is it puts more pressure on the top of the diaphragm so basically it's pushing the pin down in the actual injector pump so basically what it's going to do this is going to add more fuel in from the get go so basically you load down RPM up until about 2000 RPM this is going to add more fuel so basically what I do is I wind it in clockwise one full turn so you crack it off the lock nut unwind it a turn and they're usually quite tight these so basically 360 degrees I'm going to wind it in clockwise so tighten it up so there's 180 and there's 360 so basically that's like I say just adding more fuel on the very very low RPMs so then just lock that off get your little your little core plug pop that back in and that's that part of it completely done now then we're going to move to knocking the security seal off this so basically it has like a little plastic collar and it has like a little metal collar and all it is basically is just to protect people from messing with it so we're going to get underneath that with a screwdriver you can see it's levering off all the way around there and we're just going to get rid of that so that comes off and you see there's a lock nut there so basically all we're going to do with this is we're going to go we're going to unlock the lock nut and we're going to go clockwise on this fuel screw only 180 degrees yeah that's just half a turn so I don't recommend doing any more because like I say it's very dangerous like and get diesel run on so if you crack that off I might have to pop you down because I need two hands for this so pop you down there don't know if you can see that so basically I'm just going to go in half a turn on the screwdriver so half a turn that's it and then I'm going to lock it off lock it off that's all I've done half a turn clockwise and that's it all done so basically that's it nice simple little mods that's all I do to injector pumps yeah you will get black smoke yeah you will get higher exhaust gas temperatures but she'll shift you know so it's good for off-roading and that nice little mod uh, once you've done that you can increase your turbo boost pressure by shortening the actuator rod on your turbo uh, they're easy on the 200 TDI's a bit more complicated on the 300 TDI's because they're, they're underneath so it's easier to slip the manifold off with the turbo just slide it away from the engine so you can get access to the actuator rod so yeah just shorten the actuator rod by about five to seven millimeters and that'll work well with a boost and, and with this little modification you'll find your 200 and 300 TDI's will absolutely fly If you're working on it and you accidentally engage the throttle what will happen is the fuel pin will pop out as so if it does pop out you won't be able to put the diaphragm back in again so you need to get a screwdriver in it and pop the fuel pin back in 
otherwise the diaphragm won't go back in so there she is popped back in again so you need to do that otherwise you will not be able to get this diaphragm and, and the fuel controller back in so bear that one in mind <laughs> Yeah, so that's it really easy way of modifying your 200 and 300 cdi discos and defenders just a simple way of doing it didn't get too technical or anything like that i'll save that for other videos so yeah that's it for this one thanks for watching i'll catch you on the next one <laughs>